We would be playing defense, man, and we'd bust our butt in. I think I am the only one down court. Tim would throw it to me, and I'm like, I'm getting ready to dunk. And I look down, somebody said, Phew. and it'd be Chris up under the ball. I'm like, how the heck did he get down there so quick? <laughs> Your man didn't shoot the ball. He on the other side. How did you get down there? All right, welcome back to another After Dark, everyone. Hope you all are having a good night, and I hope you had a good day. Um, this one is called Run TMC, The Power of Three. Uh, this is from a channel called Bo YYF. I've never heard of this channel. I'm not sure where they where they found this footage. Um, but I was just watching the first like minute or two of this, and it seems to be like a full breakdown and like interviews and all kinds of stuff about um, Run TMC. Now, there was only a small little group of us that enjoyed that video I did, or I reacted to. So I introduced Run TMC to a lot of people, it seems like. However, the views were like so low, but everybody who did watch it and commented either said they had no idea this ever happened, or they were like, yeah, you know, please, please do some more Run TMC stuff. So this is one of those like, screw it. Even if it gets 200 views, it gets 200 views. Like, I loved Run TMC. That era of basketball was so ahead of its time and so exciting. And I think it should be documented more. So that's why I'm doing this because I really don't care. You know, like as far as if I get low views, the the joy that that I see in the comments with stuff like this, I think it's really, really important. So it's it's just, it's worth it, hands down. So everybody who is calling out for more Run TMC, here we go. And if you guys enjoy this one, I'll do another one. <laughs> All right, everybody, as I always do, I'm gonna link the original video down below uh, in the description box. So if you guys wanna check it out, go for it. And uh, yeah, I'm not so sure on this channel, they might have other cool stuff on there too. Feel free to check it out. Everybody else, please leave me a like. Uh, I I appreciate it a ton, and that's how we've gotten to where we've gotten. And uh, I thank you very much, because without you guys watching, I'm just some random dude rambling on YouTube. So, without further ado, here's some Run TMC. The Power of Three. Hey, Timmy. This is Ron TMC right here. Me, Molly, Mitch. Ron TMC. <laughs> I'm going back about 20 years. I'm going to stay. They were here and cheer. Four years running with the three man crew became something. Yes, sir. I'm a man, man in the point. Kill a cross in the morning. Go back in the joint. And by his side, going day after day. Rich, rich man, rich man, I'm getting his way. Last but not least, he's a jump shot piece. On a pony's Chris Moen is having a feast. Hard to find a trio better than these three. Can Mitch and Chris run up the NBC? Come on, you know you were cool if you had your own theme song. Like, that's a badass trio right here. We are here with three of the greatest players to ever play in the NBA. Oh, sick. Ahmad's doing the interview. Perfect. Uh, real quick, one of my favorite, I'm not saying best, one of my favorite players of all time. Timmy, man. Timmy Hardaway. Uh, Mitch, dude, also another one of my favorite players from that era. Chris Mullen, I love him. Always have. And uh, I got to say, I was watching, um, because of uh, comments led me there, I watched this short video of uh, Chris Mullen having a shootout uh, versus Kevin Durant. And this was about, like I think, five, six years ago, something like that. Chris Mullen beat him. And Chris Mullen is probably what? 50, like high 50s right now, maybe like 56, 57 years old. How crazy is that? Pure shooter. And also three of my main men. <laughs> <laughs> Way back in the day. Let's talk about Run TMC. Your coach is Don Nelson, so that seemed to be perfect because he was kind of thought outside the box to come up with whatever you guys had. You were telling me earlier you guys didn't even have a playbook. Oh, you had a playbook, but you never used it. We had a pretty extensive playbook, but on given nights, we would junk it. Junk on a it, given yeah. night, Nelly would give us the freedom to go out there and play if we played the right way. In the locker room, he said, you know what, guys, tonight, we're gonna, I'm going to call no plays. As long as you guys are sharing the basketball, 
playing the right way, no plays. And that was an incentive for us to get out there and just do just that. That's awesome. So, so the team earned Nelly's trust to the point where he'd Tim say, go free flow. Because he had the ball most of the time. Damn. Tim was so good at breaking his man down. The one rule we used to give him was you can't beat your man every time the first time. And look out, here comes the Hardaway Express. Hardaway throws it over to Richmond with authority. The simple rule was throw ahead, come out the other end, and then the second time you touch the ball, go do your thing. Uh -huh. Kill a crossover. Brother. Uh, <laughs> I used to just come down at, at, at sometimes a half court. You can you could just tell who's on the right side, who's on the left side. When you left them on your right, and you just feel them just sprint down and trying to fill the lanes and try to see who's gonna get the ball first and make a layup and make a shot. Now the Timmy Hardaway, he got skills. Did he? All of a sudden they were. All, I mean, you guys, you sold out 41 games, you sold out the whole season at, at one point. And then you had all these things where if you scored a certain amount of points, they got pizzas. Pizza. So they were in it, and they got oh, pizzas yeah, that's a lot. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> now they're screaming for pizza again. <laughs> and the Warrior fans are a happy bunch. They all get free pizza. <laughs> Gave a lot of weight out there. Yeah. They were yeah. seriously into it. So it had to be just a perfect situation for all of you. I, it was. I, I think uh, it was a. It was just a fun time because we didn't have a problem scoring, and uh, and, and we came. Uh, Nelly would come in the locker room and said, and say, "Hey, the first one, to 125, win the game." <laughs> we're like, okay, well, we gotta get to 125. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that just shows how he was. What like 20? He was close to 30. 30 years ahead of his time, uh, uh, ahead of the, the the natural evolution of basketball. Did you ever practice defense? Yeah, well, actually we did. <laughs> <laughs> but your, your offense was your defense. We would be playing defense, man, and we'd bust our butt. And I think I am the only one down court. Tim would throw it to me, and I'm like, I'm getting ready to dunk. And I look down, somebody said, Phew. and it'd be Chris up under the ball. I'm like, how the heck did he get down there so quick? <laughs> Your man didn't shoot the ball. He on the other side. How did you get down there? I mean, the other guy contested. He would leak out. All. We called the leak out. He was the best leak outer in the world. Huh? Hey, he was always down the court. Always. Always. He'd be oh, under the basket. God. He'd get a rebound. Get he'd kick it out to you. Next thing you know, he'd like, hey, I'm ready. <laughs> How do you get down here that quick? You're not that fast. Exactly. <laughs> now, I just want to. I just want to point it. You know, these guys loved playing together. Look how the, the pure joy of them being back together and just talking about old times. This is great. Man, I miss the 90s. I down here. Uh, he ready, he always time. ready. He always, always ready. ready. That's cool. That, that looks really awesome. I wonder, does anybody know what year this is from? Because I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm getting the impression this interview was done like maybe in the mid 2000s or something like that. Because Ahmad said, "I haven't, you know, you guys are my main men from back in the day." So that that that, that makes me feel like it's been an extended period of time. Because back in the 90s, Ahmad was doing NBA Inside stuff, and Run TMC was on there all the time. So I, I, I did you, it's just that the guys look so young still. It's hard for me to imagine. Too much time had passed by the time this interview was done. What's in a name? Well, in there sports, the catchy nickname brings a certain identity. The Lakers have Showtime. The Pistons were the bad boys. Houston had the Twin Towers. The Vikings had the Purple People Eaters. Anything else? Elvis was the king. <laughs> but no one was able to hang a label on the Warriors' high-scoring trio of Chris Mullen, Tim Hardaway, and Mitch Richmond. So fans sent in ideas, and Warriors TV announcer Steve Albert asked the players for the phrase that fits. The dunk and go nut. Wait. Hold. Nope. Not that one. I think I saw something. Thank God they didn't name it this. <laughs> Jeez. Thank God they didn't name it this. Nelly's Gleesome Threesome. Man, 
This would have had a whole different meaning. The Dunk and Go Nuts. The Dunk and Go Nuts. The Dunk and Go Nuts. <laughs> no? The Three Amigos. Three Wheel Drive. The Baymuda Triangle. Not. Not for Tim Hardaway. <laughs> no. Excuse me. That, that's out. Okay. But it is run <laughs> from TMC. <laughs> You are now known officially as Run TMC. <clears throat> Good luck, congratulations, fellas, and um, may the best man. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time to get this together so we could all sit down together and kind of talk about things that had happened. Let's talk about some of your early basketball memories and how you guys got started playing basketball and came to love the game. Tim? I used to watch my dad play basketball when I was growing up. He was a basketball legend in the city of Chicago. The game was very exciting to me and just had fun watching him. And that's how I started playing basketball. And Mitch? Yeah, I was a football player out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Football was my number one love. Uh, I started okay. playing uh, basketball actually in the 10th uh, grade and loved it ever since. I used to hear about you way back in the day of going all across town trying to find games. Yeah, my, my career started right on Flappish Avenue in the heart of Brooklyn. Fortunate enough to have great coaches as a youngster, taught fundamentals, skill work. They taught me how to get in the gym and practice. Uh, but when I went to high school, you know, I got into up into Harlem, into the Bronx, downtown and Queens and started playing, that game? playing all over the place. <laughs> so I had a unique combination of this fundamental teaching and then brought in a little flair Street with the city ball. game. Yeah. And that, that combination. It worked for me. That makes so much sense. That makes so much sense with this game. That's why I, I, he was different than anybody else. Here's Hardaway now. Ooh. Hardaway with a great pass to Richmond and Dean. This is just a oh, beautiful reverse by Mullen. Passion is one of the keys to being successful as an athlete. What is it about basketball that you guys were so passionate about? <laughs> I think for me, I mean, just winning and, uh, and playing it. I think every day, you know, going out and competing, trying to beat the next guy, it was easy for me. I love the contact and the ability to just be physical and play, play free was, uh, I think, the passion for me. Here's Richmond, super move. When you talk about passion, to me, the first thing I think about is love of the game. Going to play anywhere, yes, sir. anytime. You tell Nelly put me back in the game, man. I'm just about getting hot. Whether it was in the morning in an empty gym, or you had to play at a packed house in Madison Square Garden, you, you bring the same effort. Yep. Tim Hardaway and Mitch Richmond, they did that all the time. Uh, especially Tim. Have I said anything that jeopardized me? The thing about him, but he would let you know about it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> Us as teammates. Yes, yes. The other team, That's which right. we used to say, Tim, relax, man. You know, let's try and win this game. Don't get them riled up. What did I say? <laughs> that passion that he brought to, to us was every day, all day. He brought Always incredible that passion. Yeah. Always that way, Tim. Always that way. Oh, yeah, Mark. It's authentic. You know, I just love to play the game, love to win, love to compete. Oh. Oh. Was that K? Was that KJ? Oh, you know, I just love to play the game, love to win, love to compete. Yeah, I think that's KJ. Wow. What a contest. Peace. What a layup, dude. <laughs> Holy crap. Damn. Good defense, KJ. Damn. Better offense. By the way, that, that throwback jersey is really cool. That was that was what the, the Suns used to rock in the, uh, the 80s and uh, early 90s until 93. Oh. Oh. <laughs> It didn't matter who I was playing against, who was on my team. I just felt that we had a chance to win each and every night. Oh, yes, Bill! Oh, yes, Bill! Way to freak him. Way to I freak him. No, look, we're going to go in here and we just going to beat him down. <laughs> <laughs> you were he was about 6'9", right? I know. <laughs> I know. We played with a lot of confidence. You know, if you get knocked down, you got to get back up. You know, you have to bring your A game every day. Once you got to the NBA, was there a NBA moment where you realize this is where you're supposed to be, you belong? Did you guys have one of those moments? Yeah, I think for me, um, playing against the Lakers with Kareem, the Jude Jabbar, Magic Johnson, and uh, my first exhibition game, I can remember coming down the lane and I saw Kareem 
And I'm like, oh my God. I mean, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking, but I went down the lane and dunked it. Does he look like a rookie? Slam up. That's when I knew I had arrived. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I yeah. can play this. Well, game. I was pretty quick. So he was day one. <laughs> right, right, day I, one. I know for a fact he was day one. Before he got I, there. I saw them both come in. Right. Me? No. <laughs> Took me a little while to figure this thing out. When we got together, that's when my career took off. And it it's not coincidental. Their talent and greatness made me look good. He's being modest. He talking about us. He was always in shape. He was always in the gym calling us, talking about let's go work out, let's go play. You're probably the best person in shape in the whole NBA. At the practice, he'd go in there and get on the Stairmaster. He'd come in and he'd just, all right, let's do some more after practice. We like, hold up, man. Practice is <laughs> over. <laughs> you know, well, you know, he wanted to get some more shots up, wanted to do this, wanted to do that. And we stayed a lot of times, one, two hours after practice. But, you know, that's how much fun we had playing together. And we just wanted to win. Yeah. And, I mean, that'll build camaraderie between the three of them, too, like that. Because they're doing all these activities and extra training away from the team. Uh, Bulls, uh, second three-peat Bulls had a trio like that between Ron Harper, Scottie Pippen, and Michael Jordan. They would all uh, they would all get together in the morning and have an extra workout session that the rest of the team didn't do. And yeah, that you could just see the footage. They were like three brothers on the on the bench, just like these guys. Pitch Ellis's pocket up ahead to Hardaway. You know, we didn't win championships together. We only played three years together, but um, we had a lot of fun. Yeah. And we drove a lot of people crazy because we played a crazy style. Uh -huh. People couldn't stop us. They couldn't scout us. They didn't know what we were doing because we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. If, you, if they went to the playbook, we'd be like, what are you looking at? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I said it in the, in the previous video, but it's like uh, the equivalent of jazz music on the basketball court because they're just free flowing. And if they don't know what the hell they're, they're going to do next, there's no way the, the opposition knows what the hell they're going to do next. Nothing is scripted. Because we might have a play, but we're, we're not running them tonight. Yeah. We're just running you. Just running you. I told him that you go tape Tobit, man. That's the comedy show in itself. Look at that down there. Hey, we're live. This is Tolbert Television. There go. Tommy T. You had some crazy characters, Tom Tolbert being one of them. Tell me something, what's the most thing, what do you remember about Tom Tolbert? Each one of you guys got to have a story. Yeah, he was a character for sure. Hey, is this on? I think Tom Tolbert is basically a pretty weird guy. He wears holy underwear and he brings them to the game. <laughs> you know I bought new ones over the summer. <laughs> about four new pair for the year. Fit right in with the unconventional style that we had. He played center, come up and, and do crazy stuff. Tom Tolbert with some good ball handling skills all the way. The crazy, the bobcat hair, haircut. And that's bad. If I can talk about someone's haircut, it's got to be pretty bad. <laughs> I bet it looked exactly like that when he woke up this morning. Uh, I never Marshall? heard that terminology, the bobcat haircut. What is Sarunas Marcellonis was a pretty tough player. Tough player. Yeah. And especially in the way, in your scheme of things. Hardaway slips one over to Marcellona, steps into the lane, gets up into the air, and hits. Mitch. Sometimes he's like, Tim, why don't you stick Marshall Lawrence in practice? He said, I just can't deal with him today. He's just too rough. <laughs> He's he just too rough. I mean, they actually thought when we and Sharunas played, they thought we were fighting each other. Because we used to push and shove and run each other over. And anybody knows Sharunas. I mean, he wants to go to the basket. They got the number. We were playing the Bulls one night. Yeah, I can Michael. see some some uh, similarities between like him, Ginobili, offensively, and uh, who else am I thinking of? Oh, damn. Uh, it's going to drive me nuts. I can see his face. Well, and Scotty, someone's shooting the free throw. I happen to be at half court with them, and they're like, I'm not guarding him. You got him. <laughs> Mike's like, no, 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 no. You guard him. Right. Yeah. This guy's running me over. <laughs> he was a great, great player. Yeah. He really yeah. was. Yeah. And Manu Ball. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, which actually worked perfectly for us. I'm not going to speak for them. Not the best defensive player in the world right here. <laughs> yeah, don't speak for us. Uh, I'm not going to speak for you yeah, guys. Yeah, known to get, known to get blown by every yeah. once in a while. <laughs> but you have a seven foot seven yeah. dinker behind you. Right. God rest his soul. 
My man Manute, he was blocking shots up, getting us out in the break. Oh, what a play by Bowl! Stuffing Weddington on the rim, he had it down. Throwing that thing up there like that. <laughs> oh, the three. Yeah, this guy. His three-point shot. Yeah. <laughs> he cranks it back, back behind his right shoulder. And he could actually hit these two guys. This was, wow. Look at his body. It's insane. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So you guys didn't have a lot of success in the playoffs. But in 1991, you guys beat David Robinson in San Antonio uh, in the first round. What are your memories of that? I remember losing the first game and um, having a team meeting and how confident Nelly was we were going to win the series. He was, I think he made a little, little lineup change for game two. Well, let me put uh, Chris on the team. Uh, Jeff. Let's say I found something. I found it. We're going to get him. We're going to beat him. But you two dudes got to play some defense. <laughs> 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 Willie had like 30 and Ross Strickland had like 30. I'm like, hey, you going to pour us out like that? Oh, damn. You get called out like that, you got it. <laughs> You got to come with it the next game. We came with it. I, the name I was thinking about earlier, Vinny Del Negro, by the way. Jeez, that was driving me crazy. Here goes Mullen. Draws the crowd all the way to the basket. Got it! So after that came the Lakers. I remember that Magic could not handle you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's Hardaway, three on the shot clock. He's off and yeah, running. Yeah, defensively, what the hell is Magic going to do against <laughs> a young Tim Hardaway at full speed? What really happened was, after we won game two, we was excited to go home. But I think that we kind of embarrassed them with Run DMC when they announced us. That's right. You had oh, Run DMC yeah. in person at the game. Right. Performing. Right. right. Before the game. That might have been not been the right thing to no, do. No, that wasn't the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Those marketing people, man. Yeah, yeah. That was the right You win one thing. game and get a little carried away. <laughs> right, right. That they was forgot. Right. Magic. Worthy. Yeah. Byron. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gets away. What a pass. By the way, Hello. Byron and, and Worthy are two dudes. They don't they don't mention yeah, enough. Elder Campbell, them. what's no. up? We had the games on. I think we, we were in the games. Yeah, we was in the games. Yeah, I think yeah. The, the experience of, of them down the stretch, uh, because we, we felt comfortable going back home. Most of the game we were in it. Good defense by Maybe Worthy, the last too. last seven or eight minutes, that's when we kind of, like, um, you know, didn't get over the hump, but they, their experience kind of took over. Ball to Magic, he's down the middle. Over Good to feet. Worthy, 18 feet Good out. Shot. The Lakers win the Western Conference semifinal. Wait a second, you posting up? I'll post up little people like Spud, we have multi poles. Uh, you know, not too many people. You know, I got that in my little repertoire, you know, a little something like that. Repertoire. Hardaway into the lane, turns on the post up. Oh, nice there you up, go, and up and under. under. With a scoop shot. What a beauty. But uh, that's the main guy that pulls stuff from people down low. When we need a basket, give it to Mitch, Mitch down yeah. low. We call him Hammer. Down there hammering people in the basket. Hammer, huh? Back to Richmond, five in the clock. He dribbles underneath and scores. Don't lead the hype. I'm the one get hammered. Richmond with it. Smith hanging on his back. So now, run TMC, they're rolling along, and all of a sudden, boom, you get traded. Yeah. Man, the world stops. Mm -hmm. How was that? Man, that was a real tough time for me. I'm going to miss playing with the guys and stuff, uh, Chris and Tim and Rod. Uh, it was just, uh, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to think. Felt yeah, like Nelly, Nelly did come out later on and say it was a big regret. He shouldn't have broken up these three. This was a family to me and didn't get traded. It was very difficult to handle. 
you know, things happen, and, and this is a business, and you got to look at it that way. And so uh, you just got to move on. I mean, like, Sacramento was, like, an hour away from, from Golden State, and the headlines was always Golden State. Chris, how would you see it? I mean, you saw them come, and you saw it all be put together. Then to see it sort of change, how did you adjust to that? Yeah, I was caught off guard, obviously. And uh, opening night, the trade went down. I was in shock. Ironically, we flew home from Denver and played Sacramento. Man. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was a bad game for Sacramento. Yeah, I, I, I remember, coming, <laughs> remember coming to the arena, and uh, I went to the wrong uh, locker room. Oh. I went to the Golden State side. Because uh, I was just, I was still in shock. I said, man, I don't even know where I'm at. After Mitch left, wow. there was a roster changes here, there, and everywhere. And then um, some tough times for a bunch of years at Golden State. Warriors on their way to missing the playoffs for the 16th time in 17 years. A lot of people in the Bay Area try and track, you know, where did that thing start turning? I always think it's when Mitch left. Right. You know, that, that's, that was, that the, was the beginning to the I end. I think so. Yeah, yeah it, it caught everybody off guard. I thought, you know, we was going to be together a long time. Right. Yeah. Just put the pieces together, you know, whatever we needed. And I just thought that was the beginning <coughs> to the end. But to your point, you know. Yeah, that, that should have been the foundation that they, that they built upon, 100%. Of the Lakers, we just couldn't get past that hump. So right. from an organizational Different standpoint, time, yeah. you got to take a risk. Looking back, probably a lot, a lot of people wish it didn't happen, but. But personally, I would imagine for the three of you, because if you could have stayed together, you would have got them. Oh, no question. Oh, no yeah. doubt. No you would have got them. Because we right you were there. just he was yeah. right there. on the cusp. Yeah. Yeah. One of the great things that we have at the NBA is if you can come up with maybe your favorite play or favorite situation, we'll find it. Maybe a favorite moment that you had in your career. Yeah, probably the one single play, which was uncharacteristic in my game. We were playing in the playoffs in Phoenix. And I actually Dumped had a dunk. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming down the right side of the court. You dunked with the right. Yeah. yeah. With his right and I almost hand. broke my back. <laughs> what? Ball and drive. Oh, oh. Up the right oh. I went up, and I think I got Yo, hit. Someone like lift me up. Right. And I was up there, I was, got scared. Oh, wow. And I dunked it, and my body was going this way. I hadn't really been there many times. <laughs> and I tried to hang on the rim. I lost control, <laughs> fell on my back. And I got up like I knew what I was doing. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Oh, man. <laughs> this is dangerous. I'm back. Oh. He's swinging on it. Oh, he let go. No. Yeah, no, Chris is not lying there. He 100% didn't know what he was doing, cuz. Oh, fell on my back. Let me show you. Like I knew what I was doing. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> All I'm right. Going. If he would have just let go, he would have possibly been fine, but he, he held on like it's a monkey bar. Back. And now, don't let go now. Hold, hold until you flatten out. That way he can land on his feet, but he lets go when he's angled like this. Oh, man, he's lucky he didn't get hurt. Look at that. <laughs> Oh, my God. He's going to broke his tailbone. Oh, no. Right Looks like I know what I'm doing, but I don't. Nope. <laughs> well, remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Come on. <laughs> we was jumping for joy. <laughs> <laughs> like, bully dunk. Wow. <laughs> that was, like, one of five dunks in my career, I think. Really? Man, that's a dangerous <laughs> dunk. It was fun, man. I mean, just sitting here, it was fun. But it's funny listening to the timeline because, you know, I referenced my first two to three years were not like this. Yeah. So when these guys got there, I cherished it so much. I was so, I, was, I wanted to protect it. So every day, like you said, was, man, we get to practice, get these great young players. It wasn't like that. It was a total change. Uh, a great combination of mix of talents, mix of personalities that just kind of fit. You know, we played only three years together, but, you know, we actually live by one another. You know, our families ate together. You know, we vacationed together. It wasn't like an uh, a NBA team to me. It was like more like of a college atmosphere uh -huh. that we all got along. For me, I think it was, a, it was actually, it was my best time uh, in, in the league. Same with me. Um, it meant everything to me. I had a great time and I had great friends and I had great teammates, and um, I enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, for me, for me pure joy. You know, I, I look at a lot of pictures of myself 
over the years. Yeah, and most times so I'm laughing and smiling, and that's what it's done for me. But sitting here today, the thing that the, the most, the thing I cherish most, are my friendships over the long term. We wish we would have did a little more, right. but for that little three-year period, man, we had a ball. It was the most fun I ever had playing basketball. Run TMC. Years later, but still going strong. Yeah. We and still could beat anybody. That's right. Oh, <laughs> See, I told you. Goes Timmy. No filter. No filter. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to our guests, Tim Hardaway, Mitch Richmond, and oh, Hall of Famer man. Chris Mullen for sharing all their memories. I'm Ahmad Rashad. So long, everybody. Dude, that was so good. That was so good. That's good, man. That's really good, man. Really good. That's so good. I agree. Wow. I. Wow. Oh man, I'm like my my face is hurting from smiling. The the just the the joy and happiness that that those three expressed for twenty some odd minutes. Like that's contagious. That is absolutely contagious. Oh man, I'm glad I did this tonight too, because I I got I I got some some buddies coming over. And we're gonna hang out and have some fun. So this put me in like the ultimate positive happy mood. Um, great to see those guys. Um, you know, at that point they were still kicking it together and they were still in touch and they still there was no hard feelings. They're uh, they're still like three brothers and it's really cool to see. Run TMC was a great time. And now after I've seen this, honestly, it means even more that that era. I'm really glad we watched this video. Um, I hope there's quite a few of you who watched this. And if anybody doesn't know what TMC, what Run TMC was all about, send them this, you know, send them this video because this will uh, help them understand it wasn't just basketball. It was fun, exhilarating basketball, but it was pure joy that they exuded and a lot of people got some free pizza so that's pretty awesome too <laughs> anyways you guys let's share our memories about run tmc in the comments let's have a fun uh happy conversation about it and um i appreciate you all watching leave the video a like if uh you haven't yet that helps me a lot subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this and i'm always down for requests and recommendations as far as other things to check out um i do believe um, run TMC and was from a comment as well to, to check it to check it out not this one but the first video that um, I reacted to regarding run TMC anyways everybody have a wonderful peaceful night have a happy night be good to your loved ones and uh, carpe diem sees the day all right tomorrow's not guaranteed all right good night everybody